The unthinkable has happened. The United States has collapsed. The political, militaristic, and economic structure that supported one of the most powerful nations on the planet is no more. A blinkered and complacent approach to the ever-shifting geopolitical landscape has resulted in catastrophe. The dollar hit by hyperinflation and underhand currency tinkering by hostile nations is now virtually worthless. Cyber attacks have destabilized the very fabric of society. Nobody knows what to believe anymore. Riots have broken out on the streets of every major town and city. Breakaway states, including Texas and California, have declared their independence. Citizens are deserting the country in droves, some to the Mexican border, others to the Canadian border. Worse still, major players on the international stage, most notably China and Russia, are circling vulture-like to pick the bones of what remains of a former superpower that was once considered unconquerable. A hypothetical scenario, granted. But in an increasingly unstable world, how likely is the collapse of the United States? Surprisingly, it might not be as far-fetched as many people would assume. The dollar is no longer the most important currency in the world. Its default status is being challenged by the euro and crypto alternatives. According to the US Treasury, the national deficit was a whopping $828 billion up to October 2023. The Council on Foreign Relations estimates that the US has sent $75 billion in aid to Ukraine following the Russian invasion of 2022. Two unsustainable and potentially devastating statistics in their own right. But America's problems go much, much deeper than just economic factors, no matter how extreme or dire. Let's examine three specific areas – politics, the military, and the economy – to understand how the United States might collapse. First off, there's a big, big election looming in the US. Come November, the American people will have another massive decision to make. Another four years of current President Joe Biden, or another four years of former President Donald Trump. Why massive? Let's rewind to November 2016 when Donald Trump was elected President of the United States. The election itself was one of the most controversial and bitter political battles in history. Secret recordings, accusations of corruption and criminality, incendiary televised debates, and personal insults of the choicest and most scathing nature dominated the front pages during the campaign. Some of those comments veered so far from the political realm that it was almost laughable. In one interview, Trump said the following about Democrat nominee Hillary Clinton. If Hillary Clinton can't satisfy her husband, what makes her think she can satisfy America? In another interview, Clinton had this to say about Trump. You could put half of Trump's supporters into what I call the basket of deplorables, right? The racist, sexist, homophobic, xenophobic, Islamophobic. However, what was perhaps the most telling take-home from the Trump-Clinton presidential election, and this has been prevalent in the electorate of many big democracies in recent years, was voter dissatisfaction with both candidates. To put it quite simply, they didn't feel like they had any choice other than a choice between the worst of two evils. In a November 2016 report, CNN revealed that just 55% of eligible voters cast ballots, the lowest figure since 1996. If that's the case, then the democratic process in any nation will become flawed. Fast forward to the 2020 election, and we saw riots on Capitol Hill, insurrection and talk of treason, unprecedented events that could, ironically, set a precedent in a few months. Undoubtedly, there are huge divides within American politics and society, but they represent so much more than whether it would be better for one citizen to vote for Biden over Trump or vice versa. That said, whichever way the upcoming election swings, the country could still be plunged into crisis. The worst of two evils. Let's assess the two most obvious hypothetical situations. First off, Biden bucks the current polls and secures re-election for a second term. Just like 2020, Trump's massive support base is up in arms. Remember, America is a vast country with different social, economic, and even cultural needs. As with any election, citizens want the person in the White House to best represent their interests. If 2020 is anything to go by, we could well see more widespread and violent protests on the streets. No matter how far-fetched it may seem, we could see the country split right down the middle. Think of the American Civil War of 1861 to 1865, with the Union, the North, on one side and the Confederacy, the South, on the other. Or, more pertinently, the Kent State shooting of May 4, 1970, where 28 National Guard soldiers fired 67 rounds in 13 seconds, killing four students and wounding nine others. And these are no lazy comparisons. The rumblings of this very nature were being bandied around during the unrest of 2020. In the terms of the immediate political challenges Biden faces, 
The two most contentious issues surrounding American foreign policy are the war in Ukraine and the conflict between Israel and Hamas, or more correctly, Biden's support for what many see as the unjustifiable mass killing or genocide of the Palestinian people in Gaza. While the current president may think that he's doing what's right for America and the wider global community, many strongly disagree. Things could backfire disastrously. But how exactly? Well, Biden and NATO might easily be drawn into direct military conflict with Russia. If Vladimir Putin were to expand his special military operation and attack other member states in the region, most likely Poland, Finland, or the newly joined Sweden, NATO and by extension Biden's America would have some very tough decisions to make. If Putin was indeed bold enough to enter the conflict with any of these three countries mentioned a moment ago, other more powerful member states would be obliged to act under Article 5 of the Charter. The parties agree that an armed attack against one or more of them in Europe or North America shall be considered an attack against them all. Nobody wants such a conflict even if Putin's own rhetoric has been increasingly bullish before and after his recent re-election in Russia. In a report from AP News on March 8, 2024, Putin issued the following stark warning regarding potential nuclear war. The nations that say they have no red lines regarding Russia should realize that Russia won't have any red lines regarding them either. Already in the hypothetical sense, Biden's second term is mired in controversy, stinging criticism and potential nuclear conflict with its most bitter and long-standing ideological foe. The police are struggling to put down unrest on the streets. The military has been called in to assist them. The president is being barracked from pillar to post. The economy is close to a meltdown. It's a scenario so realizable that it must keep many Americans awake at night. Now let's consider what would happen if Trump wrestled the keys to the White House from Biden. A far worse scenario might await America. If Trump were to make good on his threats to both leave NATO and withdraw military aid to Ukraine, it could have serious ramifications for world peace. Why? America is NATO's biggest supporter. The US contributes 22.1% of NATO's overall funding equating to around $685 million. America has provided more financial aid and military aid to Ukraine than any other country, totaling around $113 billion, according to a CNN report from September 2023. These eye-watering figures have never sat very well with Trump. In a February 2024 report from Reuters, the former president and Republican frontrunner made the following comments at a rally in Conway, South Carolina. In response to an unnamed leader's plea for reassurances regarding American support against Russia, even if said country didn't repay U.S. debts, Trump responded, You didn't pay? You're delinquent? No, I would not protect you. In fact, I would encourage them, Russia, to do whatever the hell they want. You gotta pay. Clearly, the U.S.'s historical role of world police doesn't sit well at all with Trump's America first stance. More worrying, nothing Trump has said or done during his current campaigns has suggested that he's had the merest change of heart or policy. America is still very much first in every sense of the word. And what about Trump's position on Israel? According to a CNN report from back in October 2023, not good. In a series of incendiary comments, Trump criticized Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, called Hezbollah militants very smart, and sought political gain from the attacks that killed 1,200 Israeli citizens in October 2023. He claimed that if the last election hadn't been, quote, rigged, he'd be the American president and the attacks never would have happened. More specifically, the ex-president is still seething about Netanyahu pulling out of a last-minute U.S. air attack that assassinated Iranian intelligence chief Qasem Soleimani in Iraq in 2020. However, it was perhaps Netanyahu's perceived disloyalty in recognizing that Trump lost the previous election that has stuck in his craw. Put simply, a Trump re-election could spell disaster on the international stage. But what about domestically? In some quarters, Trump is seen as the savior of the US economy. Is that true though? Figures featured in a BBC report from back in 2020 suggest otherwise. Despite Trump's claims that we built the biggest economy in the history of the world and now we are doing it again, the upturn was far more modest than his bluster and bravado claimed and was rendered almost irrelevant by the impact of the pandemic on the global economy. A crisis that he is viewed to have handled badly, costing many elderly and vulnerable US citizens their lives. So Trump wasn't an economic messiah during his first term, and chances are he would struggle to make a significant impact if he were re-elected again in November, but more on that later in the video. Keeping on the subject of the elections, 
It would be remiss not to mention the issue of potential Russian interference at the ballot boxes. The US collected compelling evidence of Russian interference during the 2020 election, most notably through agitation on social media platforms. In a report featured in the New York Times from March 2021, Avril D. Haynes, the director of national intelligence, made the following hugely worrying comments in a statement. Foreign malign influence is an enduring challenge facing our country. These efforts by U.S. adversaries seek to exacerbate divisions and undermine confidence in our democratic institutions. We can only assume that Russia would attempt to disrupt and undermine the democratic process in the upcoming election too, the results of which could be even more telling if the outcome is as closely contested as anticipated. Ironically, and hugely worrying from a Washington perspective, the ultimate fate of American politics in the immediate term may not rest with the US voters, but in hostile actors from abroad with their own geopolitical agenda. Before we leave the political debate, one significant point is worth a mention. Aside from all the controversy, the allegations of election rigging, and Trump's we had the election stolen from us rhetoric, Biden won by a significant margin in the end. According to figures published by CNN back in November 2020, he won by as much as 6 million votes. If, as the polls are predicting, things are much closer this time around, it could well lead to a lot more resentment and anger amongst the vanquished electorate. Could we, as speculated earlier, see full-scale riots on the streets? Could we see protests not witnessed since the Vietnam War in the 60s and 70s? And if so, could this be a significant factor in the United States as we know it collapsing? That remains to be seen. For now, let's take a look at the militaristic implications of a U.S. collapse. There are some well-known facts about U.S. military activities overseas. America has a military presence in an unprecedented 150 countries around the world, with more than 160,000 troops on active duty outside its borders. Furthermore, it controls around 750 bases in around 80 different countries, all of which have geopolitical significance. As mentioned previously, many potential scenarios could impact U.S. military policy in the immediate term, currently and beyond the November elections. Just how long the U.S. can continue to provide such huge amounts of aid to Ukraine is unclear at this point, approximately two years into the conflict. In recent months, Biden has experienced huge opposition in Congress to the latest financial package proposals. Back in October 2023, 117 Republicans, a majority of their members, voted against a bill that would fund a $300 million program to train and equip Ukrainian fighters. Granted, that bill was eventually passed. However, Ukrainian leader Volodymyr Zelensky must be an increasingly concerned figure with the Trump political juggernaut bearing down on the White House like a runaway train. Worse still is the prospect of being drawn into an out-and-out -out conflict with Russia. Once again, we make a reference to Article 5 of the NATO Charter. If Putin acts against a member state, NATO, and principally its most powerful member, would have to act. And while the US has the military capabilities to wage war on any other nation in the world and potentially emerge victorious, how likely a prospect is that? Tellingly, would either Biden or Trump be able to convince the American people of the necessity of going to war with Russia over Ukraine? After all, the country was part of a bigger collective of nations, namely the USSR, as recently as the early 90s. Many may share the Russian leader's views that Ukraine is part of a country it shares so many historical ties with, from ancient Rus to the Soviet Union, with Putin's defiant threats regarding his willingness to deploy nuclear warheads ringing in their ears. Many U.S. citizens would understandably see this as a battle their country simply doesn't have to fight, certainly not head on, all of which would lead to even more civil unrest in the towns and cities. This is never more so than when citizens are exposed to stories about forced conscription in Ukraine and Russia's huge losses on the front lines. Reuters puts that figure at around 315,000 dead or injured, those who cannot return to the fighting due to the severity of their wounds. To put the military situation in the starkest terms possible, if the US enters into direct conflict with Russia, a nuclear outcome is likely. But to flip that proposition around, what would happen if a Biden or Trump administration simply sat back and did nothing? Undoubtedly, Putin would annex Ukraine and install a puppet government in Kyiv. Whether that would be a precursor to further incursions into Central Europe is not so clear at this point. Like the rest of the West, the US is very much caught in a betwixt and between zone of perpetual no return, a tightrope scenario where one wrong step could spell disaster. And there's one country that studies these developments very closely, China. 
Ultimately, Beijing sees the US as its main rival for world domination. Already, Chinese leader Xi Jinping has taken advantage of Western sanctions against Russia by agreeing to buy gas and oil at significantly reduced prices. Naturally, any conflict that weakens its rivals on the geopolitical battleground could only be of benefit to China, both politically and economically. All of these segue nicely into our final section, the economic ramifications of the United States collapsing. Neither China nor another giant Southeast Asian economy, Japan, would want to see the US collapse. Why? Because the US is their biggest trading partner. In an article from The Balance in 2022, they looked at what might happen if the US economy really did collapse. Firstly, US citizens would likely lose access to credit, banks would close, in a domino effect demand would outstrip supply for food, gas, and other necessities. As such, utilities like water and electricity would no longer be available. This would create global panic. As touched on at the top of the video, demand for the dollar would plummet, interest rates would skyrocket, investors would look to other currencies like the euro, yuan, or even gold. It would create not just inflation but hyperinflation as the dollar would lose value to other currencies. This would mirror what happened in the Great Depression when many investors lost their life savings over the course of a single weekend. A bleak potential economic picture if there ever was one deprive people of the necessities of everyday life and wipe out their savings and you'll face a powder keg situation in every conceivable regard. So is there any way that the US can avoid catastrophe? Maybe. There is one potential saving grace that we haven't mentioned in the video so far, namely Trump's ongoing legal battles in the US courts. In what's looking like increasingly clever delaying tactics by his legal team, effectively postponing proceedings with red tape, appeals, and such until after November's election. It now appears that the former president has run into an obstacle that he might not readily overcome. If he's unable to raise a $464 million bond in a fraud trial, everything, including his participation in November's election, could be turned on its head. Why? Trump needs to raise the full amount to cover the verdict in the trial. If not, the courts could strip him of his assets, including his iconic hotels and other noteworthy business interests all of which would leave him financially vulnerable regarding the other legal issues he faces. While certainly a disaster for Trump's presidential aspirations and that of his many supporters, it may help steer the US out of choppy waters that could indeed have led to the country's collapse. How? If Trump's legal issues were ultimately to render him ineligible to take up the Republican nomination for the White House, another candidate would face off against Biden in the election. To avoid falling into the trap of enumerating the qualities of Trump's rivals who've already fallen by the wayside, let's say that a relatively unknown figure emerges in the considerable political vacuum. Maybe this is exactly what the US needs on both the domestic and international stage. New blood, a fresh perspective, a change of direction, potentially a new candidate that could reinvigorate a war-weary and disillusioned American electorate, giving them renewed hope and impetus for the future. With a new approach to the pressing political issues of the day, America could not only stabilize its own political, militaristic, and economic future, but be a force of good on the international stage. Naturally, the US government would have a huge role to play if a negotiated peace plan favorable to both parties could be reached in the conflict in Ukraine. This would go a huge way to defusing global tension and ease the financial strain the war has put on economies all across the world. The same applies to the situation in the Middle East. Using its vast influence over Israel, the US could be pivotal in averting one of the most alarming genocidal atrocities in human history. International diplomacy would have an undoubted follow-up effect. There would be an economic upturn and a blanket improvement in the living standard of all citizens. The threat of dissent or unrest on the streets would no longer be a worrying reality. Who knows, it might just be enough to pull the US out of the abyss. Sadly, that's unlikely to happen. No matter what legal hoops Trump has to leap through, it's almost certain that he will battle it out with Biden for the keys to the Oval Office, the ramifications of which we have covered in depth in this video. Of course, this was only a fictional account of what might happen if the US really did collapse. No matter how negatively you spin the situation, America is still one if not the biggest player on the international stage. The country has the biggest economy, one of the most feared armed forces, complete with a fearsome nuclear arsenal and powerful allies all across the world. Allies that have a hell of a lot to lose if the United States did face the ultimate of all catastrophes. That said, there are many warnings from history that any modern nation may do well to heed. From the Persian, Roman, and Caliphate empires to the all-conquering Mongol hordes, 
no matter how well established or well entrenched any nation can fall. And in such increasingly uncertain times, with so much happening on the geopolitical chessboard of 2024 and beyond, it's those who may feel untouchable who could be the most vulnerable of all. What do you think? Could the unthinkable happen? Could the United States collapse? And if so, what would be the immediate and longer term ramifications? Let us know in the comments below, then check out insane facts you never knew about the US military, or watch this video instead.